there's the uh, the bottom of it here, the business end. Okay, so now I'm going to take my two screwdrivers and pry that up using the. I've got the screws in here to use them as a as a lever. I put one on one side and one on the other, and then just kind of gently work it. Yeah, that one I could hear the rubber uh, kind of squeaking. Hey, I was looking into these injectors. This is out of a 99 Nissan Maxima, the 3 liter. And uh, today I was working on how to remove an injector from the rail. I was just interested to learn how to do it and thought, good idea to try it on this one while I've got it out and it's on the bench. And so I figured out a way to do it very easily, and I believe it's probably by design. Uh, I think Nissan maybe designed it that way uh, because it works so easily and wonderfully uh, the very first time and the second and the third. And I, basically what you do is you use uh, you remove these screws. They're number two Phillips, and you got to crack them. They're, they're kind of tight, but uh, you can get them off. And uh, you loosen them up, you remove the, uh, the cap here, the metal cap. And there's a, a rubber washer and a and a metal metallic washer underneath. You just want to make sure you don't lose that, or also make sure you don't drop it down in a hole uh, somehow. But uh, you remove that very carefully, and then uh, you can put the screws back in in the holes and don't torque them in. Just put them in until you hit resistance, because uh, what you're going to do is use the head of the screwdriver as a fulcrum point or a leverage point, and you can put two small flat blades. On each side, there's little features on underneath here, on, inside the, the that are built into the fuel injector, that allow you to put a, uh, a flat blade in there and pry it out even, with applying even pressure on both sides. And it's kind of like, it works just like a gear puller or something like that. It popped it right out. Uh, it was in there tight because you know it'd been in there for 20 some years and uh, didn't want to come out, but um, pops it out perfectly. And you don't have to, so you don't have to remove the entire rail and press it from the back side or anything. That you don't have to dis disturb a lot of stuff. You can just actually remove the one injector that's giving you a problem. And uh, once you have it out, you can use Vaseline and pop it in. It's pretty easy to go in with some Vaseline or some lubrication. And then you'll want to put the rubber uh, washer and the metallic washer down. I believe they just hold uh, clamping pressure right in the middle. I really don't know uh, exactly. Uh, there's a little metallic stem in the middle there that I still don't know what it does and I'd have to basically break one of these injectors open and try and figure out it doesn't move I thought maybe it would move uh, or maybe you could me mechanically depress it or something I don't know what it does if you know uh, I'd like to <laughs> I'd be interested to know but it's in my video it's, if you uh, just watch the video you'll see there's a little metallic stem that sticks up it almost looks uh, like it does something but I don't know what it does it doesn't it doesn't do anything that I can see and I've also checked it with an ohmmeter. There's no continuity anywhere. No idea what that thing does. But I would like to know. So uh, if you know, uh, send me a message and let me know. Thanks. Hope you enjoy the video. And I try to learn something new every day. Sometimes I learn more than one thing. Hey, so today I'm look, working on this uh, fuel injector rail from a... This is from a 1999 Nissan Maxima 3 liter. And while I've got it out on the bench here, I wanted to investigate how difficult it would be to remove an injector. And I wanted to actually answer a question as if when I needed, if I found a bad injector, do I need to pull the whole fuel rail or can I just pull the injector from the rail? Most of the time I've been able to pull them from the rail, but on this, this one here, I've never seen one, an injector like this before. They're different to me. So uh, I'm going to take some time and investigate it and see what it takes to get one of these out of here. Guess I'll be working on this one since that one's in the camera view. So it's a uh, two number two Phillips screws, get that out. And they, they were kind of tight, but I, I loosened it earlier. Actually, at the junkyard, I put, pulled the screws out, and then I put the caps back because I wasn't sure what I was looking at here. Another thing I was wondering about 
on the back of the cap here there's a uh, there's a piece of rubber like a rubber dampener and a little disc on there and then there's this piece here I'm not sure what that does uh, I don't know if that uh, I'm gonna find out though I don't know if that m actually moves when the injector gets uh, fired actually I can check that right now I'm gonna go get a power supply and power this up and see what it does so I've got a battery I'm gonna energize this uh, injector here and I've got a connector that uh, I can interface with, with it there and I've checked the battery it's a good I got 12 volts on it and I'm gonna hook it up like it should be 12 volts in the correct polarity because I don't know if maybe there's an internal diode in that thing and I would hate to find out the hard way and so I'm going to uh, click this and see if I can see that pin to move I don't know what that is I'm going to zoom in so we can take a close look at it there. And so when I touch these wires here, I'm going to energize the, the uh, injector. It's clicking and uh, I don't see that moving at all, so I have no idea what that is. Doesn't appear to move. Anyway, I'm going to keep, continue on. See if I can get this injector out of here. There's little holes in the side here. And what I'm going to try to do, I'm going to put these screws back in here. And use them as a, like a fulcrum to maybe lever that out of there. That's as far as that one goes uh, because it hits the hits the rail. I've got two screwdrivers here, so I can put one on this side in that slot and one on this side. That way I can get equal pressure. And it does appear to be coming out. I'm, I'm just gently moving it. It is coming up. So that's cool. So that's how, if I need to remove it, uh, an injector, that's how I'll do it. I'll, I'll put the screws back in. And you can see where I was levering here. There's little slots on the side on each one. And that's where I was putting in a flat blade and just gently uh, prying up on it and getting it to come out of this o-ring here so I did learn something very very useful in investigating this and that is that I can I can remove the injector by uh, using this the screws that come with it I still don't know what this is <laughs> I have no idea what that doing But here's the O-ring. I'm going to put some Vaseline on there when I pop it back in there because that'll help it go in easily. I've never seen one of these outside of the, the rail. And this one was leaking and I see there's a, a rubber seal at the bottom that looks like it's been kind of blown out or dislodged. It's just kind of sitting there right here. So that's how um, that's how you get that out of there. Putting it back in, I'm not sure, I'm not so sure. I'm gonna go get some Vaseline and ho hopefully it'll just gently pop right back in. I use this petroleum jelly all the time when there, whenever there's an O-ring, and I want it to go in easy. So I'm gonna slide that one back into place. And while it's out though, I can take a look inside the rail. 
It does look like there's a lot of dirt down in there. I don't know if you can see that. Actually, what I'm going to do, I'm going to remove another one. Trying the same technique here. I'm going to work on this one here. Yeah, see how it goes. I'll remove the two Phillips. I'm going to do the same thing, reuse them. That actually was kind of fun. <laughs> Not, normally you don't have, or I don't anyway, have ideas that work perfectly the first time. But uh, we'll see how this one goes. And this time I'm going to, uh, this time the, the uh, little washer and the rubber piece was just hanging around there. I still have no idea what that center piece does. And uh, I guess that's something I'm going to have to look into at some point. What I am going to do differently on this one, I noticed there's a lot of grit on the outside of this. So I'm going to clean that before I try to pull it off. Because that may have been where it came from. So I'm going to try the same technique on this one. Where I've got the screws back in there and I'm just going to lower it out. And I'm applying force evenly. It's almost as if they designed it that way. I'm going to take this one out. Same thing, I'm going to clean it up first. Put the screws back in there to use them. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to I'm going to change the angle of the camera just in case you're not seeing it very well. I'm going to give you a different view this time. Let me go get a tripod and I'll change change it up. Okay, I've got a different view for you now. I'm going to be pulling this injector out using the uh, the prying method that I just kind of figured out here. I'll zoom in, give you a good view here. Turn you down just a touch. That way you can see the entire injector. There's the uh, the bottom of it here, the business end. Okay, so now I'm going to take my two screwdrivers and pry that up using the. I've got the screws in here to use them as a as a lever. I put one on one side and one on the other, and then just kind of gently work it. Yeah, that one I could hear the rubber uh, kind of squeaking. So there you go, that's how you'd pull up the injectors. Pretty cool. Um, learn something new every day, I guess. Or try to anyway. Putting them in hopefully won't be very much drama. I'm going to go ahead and try it now. I'll coat it with some Vaseline. Pop it back in there. Oh yeah, it just pops right in.
I'll do this one. And yeah, we've got one more around here somewhere. This one's already got the Vaseline on it. They go in easy. So, cool. Well, it is a mystery though about what this little metal tab does. Let me see. I'll pull it back out and show you a different view of it. Of the injector. Sometimes it's handy to be able to see what you're dealing with before you have to deal with it. And that's one reason I like to make these videos because uh, that's what I'm doing right now. It's just seeing what I might have to deal with. So what I'm interested in finding out, and maybe if you know, you could tell me what this little pin right here does. I thought it might move uh, because it has a rubber uh, piece here. It doesn't move that I can see. And the slots here I'm able to use as the leverage points. And there's the big O-ring there that seals the fuel rail. And there's another O-ring here that um, seals the bottom of the injector. Because this area here is where the pressure is. And um, it appears like these are, that's a screen right there. And that's where the fuel comes in. You can see I can, I can flex the screen a little bit. Let's see if I can light it up a little better. I can kind of see through it. There is actually fuel in there still. You can see it. So that's the screen. I guess it keeps the water or contaminants out of the injector. Very fine screen. And I think there's a piece of plastic that's supposed to hold this O-ring clicked into this lip here and on this one the piece of plastic uh, was broken on all three of these injectors I think during the handling when it came out of the uh, car and then the, as it was handled at the junkyard but I think that there's a brown clip that's supposed to hold this o-ring in place and that may be why um, it dislodged the o-ring and started leaking I'll bet you that's what it is because on all three of these, there's a brown piece that uh, that uh, broke off. I could find parts of it, and that appears to be... You can see there's a little lip on this here. I can feel it with the screwdriver. And there was a brown piece of plastic that slid over here, and it looked like it clicked into there. And that would keep this O-ring from flying down and getting out. Amazing. Here we go. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and uh, button this thing up. And uh, if you know what, if you happen to know what uh, the the rubber piece does, uh, be curious to know.